You're listening to KVC Arts on 91.9 KVCR. Online at kvcrnews.org. I'm David Fleming. Up next, Steve Rushingwind and Nelson Rios will be speaking a lot about Fuego, the first recording under the name Rushingwind and the Native Groove. As we go into the conversation, though, we have in the background now one of the cuts from Fuego, although this one recorded in the KVCR studios by Steve Rushingwind, Nelson Rios, and special guest on The Shakers, Sienna Ruiz. For the most part, we'll be hearing tracks from Fuego in the background, the new release. We have Steve Rushingwind, Indigenous Flute, and Nelson Rios, El Rey de Timbales. Can I say that? You can react to that. I know you're a Tito Puente fan, so I maybe Absolutely. should not do that. But um, uh, Nelson on percussion, and we should differentiate. Uh, you're not on the drum kit. It's actual, it's percussion. It's a variety of things to whack. I started out with drum kits, and I switched over to hand percussion. You did? Okay, so that 10-year-old Nelson, you did start off on a kit. That's correct. Okay, but so is your brother's Latin band that made you switch over to percussion? Yeah, my brother's uh, Latin band was called Santa Fe back in the 60s, 70s, and they pretty much tore up the um, uh, East Coast. Okay. And I got my influence from those guys and went to you know, a different direction. Nice. Wow. I knew of your association with uh, the Miami Sound Machine, but uh, Santana, I, I just read or re, re-remembered this one. I don't know how best to say this. I think I knew it at one point. How did you end up with Santana? I know you've played here and there with some of the Santana percussionists. That's correct. But Carlos? Well, Carlos and I met uh, in 93. Radio station back east, WMMR, had a uh, contest. They were looking for the best percussionists in the East Coast. And they had about maybe 1,600 contestants. And it was Friday, the last day, and had about 30 minutes to go before they selected their uh, percussionists, their winner. So I happened to be going right by the radio station, stopped in. I'm looking at these horrible congas. I asked for a wrench to tune them up, and the director goes, that's definitely our winner. <laughs> you know, so they tune them up, and the, and the deal was they, would, they selected a song from Santana, and when they stopped it, you would do a solo. Well, my tribute band, we always ended our gigs with Soul Sacrifice. Soul Sacrifice, of course, sure. They happened to pick Soul Sacrifice. Oh, yeah. So there was, yeah. It was like chopped liver. You, you didn't even me? have to improvise. It was no, just. Not at all. It was all natural. And now I'm thinking, man, they're in for a treat. And uh, from there, um, two weeks later, Santana was in town in Jersey doing a couple concerts. And uh, I was invited on stage. Huh. Wow. Yeah. And from there on, we just became, you know, good friends. And uh, he locked me in as a, uh, a backup. Nice. Wow. Well, now, as Steve, we've had on the program a few times before, mm-hmm. and we're in essence looking at Fuego. This is quite different than past releases, but in ways, too, it's it's also, you know, there's a wonderful uh, continuity as well. Yeah. Uh, the first several, they were relaxing, uh, even the one that you refer to as your crazy horse recording. <laughs> um, crazy and then horse. Red Beaten Path, yes. that is an incredible wow. disc on so many levels. And then very recently, Nordic Passage. But now, Fuego, this one you can still chill to, okay? But it's definitely amped up. I mean, it was named Fuego for a reason. Thank you. 
And so I want to get to now that it happened to be Nelson here that called it Fuego and yes. threw out that explanation. Let's hear that story. Well, you know, we were sitting, we were standing in the uh, the control room and we were looking at the, we were playing some of the music back. I had just came in from playing my part and we're, sit, we're sitting there, or actually standing in the control room talking to Oscar from El Cerrito Studios and we we're there and then Nelson comes walking in and he goes, man, this album is on fire. And then he goes, that's Fuego. And then he looks at me and I'm like going, oh, I go... <laughs> that, that you, you, how do you how do you beat that? You know, and I go. That's it. I go. That's it. He goes. What? That's the name of the album. He goes. Fuego. Yeah. Why not? So that started you. That's it. I fit the picture better than quiet sailboat or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time I spoke with Steve, he had just come back from the Native Rhythms Festival in Florida, and then the last time Steve and I spoke. Uh, you guys were all just about to go to the Native Rhythms Festival. <laughs> Again, this is in Florida, and this is where Fuego got its premiere, the, the soft release. Yep, that's correct. Well, uh, tell us about what, first of all, what the Native Rhythms Festival is, your part in it. And uh, you were more of a feature this year. You actually got some of the more primo uh, playing time. Yeah, we got the spotlight on Saturday With the night. Sunday yeah. morning at 11. Yeah, Sunday morning at 11. <laughs> that was the year before. But, yeah, we did. Actually, we did play we did, on Sunday yeah. at you morning. You did play on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, it did. was about 11 o'clock. But it, it ends after that. Okay. But, we, but we actually, Saturday night, we got the, uh, the spot, the headlining spot Saturday night. Uh, but it was really cold. It was freezing, believe it or not. Florida, <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Uh, I had a scarf on, and you could see breath coming out of out of our mouths. It was just it was felt like a football player it was in, chilly. In, in, <laughs> over in, 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 in the Packers or something. Is this the kind of festival where after everyone's done playing at the festival, it wouldn't surprise anyone to go to the one of the local watering holes and oh, yeah. there's an informal jam? Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's just about every There's single night. There's actually videos yeah. on Facebook of that. Yes, there is. Nelson yeah. was playing uh, congas. Yeah, I, I started that mess. Yeah, you actually started that mess. You it's walk like... into a bar with a couple of congas strapped to your back? Uh, no, I, I actually picked up a doom back. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay. okay yeah, cool, and I cool. kind of started some crazy rhythms, and everybody else <laughs> ran out to get their djembes and stuff, and people started dancing, and flute players come out. It was kind cool. of crazy. <laughs> Incredible. Well, the first several tracks on Fuego are somewhat laid back, uh, not, again, not quite a quiet, meditative thing, uh, but there's still interesting percussion going on, and this is a tambor de la noche, drumming of the night. Well, naturally, then, it has quite a percussive dominance. It's not a loud thing, but it's a steady uh, accompaniment, and it is more, I think, dominant than some of the other tracks. That's true. So uh, how did this one, as far as coming together, how did you end up being, uh, how did it end up being? more of a dominance um you know I, I took the flavors from you know um the african people taino people from you know the caribbean islands mm -hmm. and um you know when you mix that blend together they have traditional songs that are inviting to outsiders mm -hmm. you know and on our homeland you know these are graceful songs that are they to spread you know health karma uh wisdom and so forth. And, you know, you take these rooms that we, we grew up with and you kind of combine them. Mm -hmm. You know, a little piece of this guy, a little piece of that guy, and you kind of come up with your own, own rhythm, rhythms to um, to offset the beats. And I'm pretty good at that. I've come up with my own ideas and, you know, seven eights and five seven rhythms. And people mm -hmm. goes like, wow, that's pretty difficult you did, you know, to do. And yeah, you, you do it with comfort. Okay. Well, that's, but that's what we wanted on this album was that I knew that he had uh, a, some rhythms, some beats that he wanted to uh, pr promote, put out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I says, well, why don't we do that and just add a flute, just put flute and add it only. So that's what we did. Okay, so some of it uh, really started like that. Let's start mm -hmm. with the percussion, mm -hmm. as opposed to, I guess, bringing out the melody and having the percussion exactly. supplement that. Exactly. Right, right. Okay, right. wow, cool. Well, now, the art of this, we're speaking of Fuego again. The art that's on this will be different when we get to the hard release, but first, this one, who did the art of this? This one This one was done uh, by Sandor, and he's from he was from Sweden. Sweden. And uh, he Sweden. did this uh, CD cover for the promotion emotional one. Okay. We knew we were going to have a different one for the uh, hard release. What What's going to be on the new one? Uh, that's going to be kind of a surprise. Okay, it's still coming. Yeah, okay. It's, uh, well, we're, we we have an idea already, but it's it's coming. But we're we're not we're not going to release that one out of the bag yet. Just There'll yet. be some fire at least, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be fire. it'll be okay. some colors. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Um, 
Well, Fuego itself, now we're talking about the title track to this release, uh, four tracks into it. This one does, again, starts gently, although I have to say there's a reminiscence of Santana in there. There is. I don't know whose fault that is, or who, but... I have a lot to do with that. Yeah? Um, you know, our, our good buddy, which they've they've met a couple of years ago, Brian, Brian, yeah. Brian Clock is our uh, guitar. Oh, okay. okay. He was my guitarist back east. Phenomenal, ah. phenomenal player, and okay. heavily influenced by the way Santana played. Mm-hmm. And I had talked to him several times. Hey, when we get when we do a CD, you got to bring that flair that Santana yeah. does, and it's very unique. Because Santana tunes his guitars, he tunes them a half scale down, mm. and that's why he gets that vibrant, rich, raw, nasty sound out of, yeah. out of his guitars. Okay, wow. Brian's got such an open, vivid mind that he knows how to tune that guitar exactly just like Santana. Oh, incredible! And that's what you heard. And this one breaks a little over two minutes in with an all too brief percussion solo, but then some guitar. And I mean guitar, the actually searing stuff that you would not expect by now that we're four tracks in. You think you might get a gentle strum from this guy, but no. No. No, we don't. You know, we don't. We, we took, you know, we basically told Brian, it's all yours. You know, do whatever exactly. comes in your mind, it's own it. And. He knows how. He knows how yeah, to. Yeah, he, he knocked that out of the park. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Truly, truly. And yeah. then, and then he also plays a saxophone. So, so there's a there's a song in there with a the sax. And that's me, just me and, me and him were sparring on the sax, and but it was interesting because that one, uh, you know, it was like, should we put a saxophone in or what? We were. It was kind of. We were, we're playing kinda, with it. Yeah, right. we were playing with the idea. And I said, you know what, we got to. He, he's, he, he plays sax, let's do it. I had no idea how good Brian was. But that's his main instrument. But then I found out later that was his main instrument. <laughs> he gets up there and he starts we start recording the saxophone. That, that was, it blew me away. Okay. And, I, and it was so much fun to hear the saxophone. You don't hear much saxophone on native uh, music. Uh, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> so it was, to me, it was just absolutely perfect. It's not a surprise to hear a saxophonist uh, being a, a flute doubler. But it's uh, but not so much indigenous flutes. It's a different kind of thing there. You know, I like to just inter- just kind of chime in here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, now, yeah. Now, we're Please. talking about Brian Clock. What happens is that we have our our main core g- uh, guys that go out. That's true. Uh, Brian Clock. He's from the West Coast. He does a lot of West Coast. He will be joining us in a lot of these gigs. But we also have Thomas Kurtner. Okay. Now Thomas Kurtner is a, a he's from Townsend, Tennessee. Now this this cat he plays the horn he plays a trumpet he plays the cello he plays all kinds <laughs> of things, um, but he's he's a guitar, our guitar guy too as well he's the one that played actually in uh, Native uh, rhythms Native rhythms yeah. oh okay okay so so Thomas Kurtner and then we have Randy McGinnis joins us on once bass. in a while on bass so we have a slew of, of musicians that it depends on what part of the world we're in they'll join gotcha. us you know if, if we happen to be in their neck of the woods okay well so it's nice that you're. Well, you've got these folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to truly travel with the band and also introduce mm-hmm. other flavors, if you will, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't seem like you've ever really limited yourself to any one genre. And no. all these things that have happened, uh, you know, that let's, we referred to the Crazy Horse album. I think that may have been the fourth one with you and Michael Mucklow. That was our, f- uh, yeah, our fourth okay, album. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah. And so that one had a little bit more of a, I don't know, country edge or country rock kind it of It was more country rock. It. It, was, it was more kind of like influence from Neil Young. Kind okay, of okay. Yeah. Well, then with, um, then with Red Beaten Path, there is a variety of different explorations in that right. one. And, of course, Nordic Passage. Mm-hmm. Well, there's something else. But to be honest with you, you know, as an artist, I'm a painter. And when I paint, you know, I might have an idea what I want. Right. But if I had everything planned out, it, it wouldn't be art. Yeah. yeah for, for me, it has to come as it goes. It's part of the journey. Uh, this, this music is the same thing. After I'm, sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to do next. Okay, good. And sometimes I just sit there and something just strikes me and I'm like, you know what? I want to go that direction. That's why I have so many genres of music that I do because I can't, I have never been one to stick just the one thing as far as I, I spi- variety of life is spice, you know, okay. it's what it, it really is, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm more into, to changing the tune, the tempo, bringing different, you know, whatever, who, who can collaborate with. It's a lot of fun. It makes That's what makes live music life fun. It's one of the things that I love about, really, I have to say, any of your discs at this point, but it's exploring the different levels, the, the textures, that is. It's, they're all mm-hmm. very thick, textured releases, and there are things layered in and on top of each other. And mm-hmm. it's always really cool. You can give things a an 18th and 19th and 38th listen, and 
get something new. Get something new on that. Yeah. And, you know, and, so, and, you know, going back to traditional uh, native flute music, I mm-hmm. mean, I'm, I'm in the process where we're, I, I just figure I'll just let, let people know about this. But um, I'm an endorsed artist now, High Spirit Flutes. Yes. And, and uh, uh, High Spirits with Odell Borg, we've, we've decided to, uh, through his label, uh, we're going to do a kind of more traditional type flute uh, album. Uh, probably I'll bring Nelson in, do a few songs with some beats in it. But it's mainly going to be more, this going to be more concentrated on the flute. Okay. And uh, going back to basics, basically that's what, how I'm going to look at. That really going haunting back, through yes, the canyon. Yes, yes, pretty much. No crickets though. Trust me. <laughs> no crickets. No birds. No water. I, I don't. I'm done with those. Well, despite R.C. Nakai having the various, you know, the jazz grouping and the orchestral yeah. groupings, yeah. if I think of R. Carlos Nakai, what I think of is that haunting through the canyons mm-hmm. kind of kind of thing with him. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, well, we were talking about endorsements. Now, uh, Nelson also has some quite cool endorsements and it helped to shape one of the drums. Can we just explore this? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, um, when I first was endorsed by Tycoon Percussion. Tycoon. Tycoon Percussion. Okay. Um, yeah, they're basically, they're, their homeland is Thailand. That's where they're made. Okay. And, um, and I approached the R&D team, and we were talking about congas, and uh, I said, hey, guys, it's like you're missing the boat here. And they go, like, what do you mean? He goes, you got beautiful percussion stuff, but you got to go back to old school. And their artist relation guys, uh, George Balsama, and I said, George, he's Cuban. I said, George, what do you have in your homeland when you're a kid? Mm-hmm. Think about it. You know, uh, you know, we always call them the, uh, the brown wheelbarrow, you know, because they, you know, they're, okay, sure. they're naturally brown with a, with a metal strap around them, you know. And, uh, and the metal, uh, so people, no, nobody really will know. There's going to be a couple of drummers out there and, and probably fewer percussionists. So yeah. talk about why the metal band even. It's more than just holding the thing together. That's, that's true. It, 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 it allows it to resonate different tones. You know, uh, it's pretty much like the glue of the drum. Okay. And, um, you know, and it's traditional. I mean, it, you know, this drum was founded in Cuba in that particular style, you know, with, with the uh, uh, band strapped around it. And, um, you know, a lot of... Manufacturers and you know percussion manufacturing company in general, you got away from that, you know. And uh, then when Tycoon got the idea from me, it's like, hey, you know, bring it back. And sure enough, you know, the following year, I was at NAM and they had what I'm playing with now on display, and that was their first artist to pick up their heritage series. Hmm. And ever since then, it's like I take them on tour. Now, the, I I have to say that the, the way you just told this, it was a much gentler version than what you told me earlier it was more like you <laughs> saw the drum and it was like what are you thinking <laughs> guys this should have to come on i gotta be nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there you go yeah teenager yeah teenager. oh you know i have to say too that i I'm, I'm trying to work this one out too about steve telling me how nelson would be coming up and nelson with the miami sound machine and how when I first met you uh, uh, roughly a year ago, I was, I'd be showing up there with a bunch of Sharpies and the album of the Miami Vice soundtrack. And, um, uh, and just, uh, but that never happened. But I'm trying to work out that story better somehow. Cause, I mean, and someday I maybe will have you sign my Miami Vice soundtrack just so I can, you know, you took pity on me. But uh, one of the other tracks on here, I believe this is, oh, uh, the next track on here. This is uh, track five on this, the Heart of Love, uh, Corazon, Corazon de la Mor. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. this one, backing down again, this one starts, what, it's a bit of a synth. There's some percussion and then some chanting by Steve. Yes. Oh, yeah. And last time Steve and I were speaking, uh, you were talking about getting a little bit freer with your chanting mm-hmm. and uh, is this and so is this something that you've been exploring then does that come out here um this one here was not as free as the one with nordic okay. passage yeah. nordic passage had a little bit more lo- longer uh, uh, chanting on it this one here is a little shorter but what we wanted to do this song here uh we we actually got the, when we were in the studio uh, in philadelphia we were talking we were actually collaborating on this one and I wanted it to start off and then change into something else I wanted it to morph okay so we started off thinking oh this is gonna be a, a typical you know type of uh, you know chanting, chanting with the flute and things mm-hmm. like that but then I wanted it to just kind of slow down and then it picked up and then all of a sudden it changed into something else um, and that's that's where this uh, this song with the, with the chanting though um, it, it, it's it's not as long as it is like a Nordic passage. Sure, no. It's no. Like, more like a sample, I guess you might want to say. Well, it's, it's brief and short, you know? Mm-hmm. It's short, yeah. And did you by chance, or any of you, uh, did, by chance know, well, one, how it was going to 
what it was going to morph into, or did you know how it was going to start, and what it morphed um, into was sort of free and it just happened? I kind of had an idea in my head, but we, okay. did, we really didn't. I mean, I just had an idea what I envisioned, but but it's like, what I, I didn't want to be stuck on that vision. So we, you know, when these guys started doing something different, I was like, you know, I'll go, go with it. You okay. Know? I okay. don't want to say, no, I'm almost don't do that. It's, All right. So it's kind of changed a little bit. And I am hearing a drum kit in this one, too, and not just percussion. Yes? Mm, no? no? There's some there, hi-hats. There's, there's somebody hitting cymbals. There, there's a, everything's real in it. There's no kit. No, 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 not drum, oh, no, sorry. Not oh, drum no, sampling. No, it it, there is a kit. There is a kit. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like a, a, a little Buddy Rich kind of fellow exactly. sitting yes. there behind that's, the... That's yes. Butch. That's yes, yeah. Butch. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Butch Armstrong. All right. So we've got uh, both sorry, types of I, I production. Thought you, I thought you meant something else. Oh, drum sampling. No yes, way. Yes, there you no go. Way. I thought you were samples. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I, I do samples. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's when I walk out on one of your shows. That's, <laughs> you know, that's it. I'll drive to Philadelphia and then there walk out. I'll get a turntable. I'll do some scratching. How's that? Over there? Now, that's good. That's really good, especially with the F and X guys yeah, here. No. And we'll do scratching. I'll do flute, scratch, flute. That might be kind of cool, actually. No, it's some of the folks that I just interviewed. That would go right well. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's well, right. Well, now this one, uh, not quite wrapping it up, but wrapping up the disc anyway, <laughs> despite the thick textures that we were talking about earlier and presented in this release through and through, the last track, Luna Loca, uh, this one is just you and Nelson, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes, me and Nelson. So was this one, I want to know how this one came about. It, it could easily be a little jam that got recorded, or was it truly something intended to maybe end the disc, to back down and get simpler, bring yeah. people down a bit? <clears throat> You know, they, when I first met Steve five years ago um, mm -hmm. in Ohio, and I, you know, I've been playing for a very long time. I developed that tune 20 years ago, so I had it in my oh. head for many, many years. I couldn't find anybody mm -hmm. to envision that vision. And when I first heard Steve play, I'm thinking, man, that's my go-to guy. Wow. You know, we can take this and elevate this to where people are just they're going to either love it or hate it. Yeah. And uh, when we had the opportunity to create this, he flipped. You know, and, and the end result is it's, uh, you know, we, we wanted something dominating, mm -hmm. you know, but yet, you know, uh, again, we wanted the, the flute to, to be heard, to be the voice, you know, but yet we wanted the drums to capture your mind and spirit, you know, where you just, you know, sit there and just rock with it. Yeah. Well, they, they are very much um, not so much a dominant instrument, but let's say more present then you know it's uh, they're equal voices almost these two the the flute yes. and the percussion yes yes so and was this intended to be the last track to really truly bring things down or is it just something that you had and then it felt right to place there yeah that's, yeah, that's it, exactly it, what it was yes yeah. it, it pretty much ended like that yeah. it was we were we were putting together the songs and we were kind of going through the flowing of it should mm -hmm. we end it on a high note but at the very end you know it, i wanted it to end this on a on a, a kind of a natural acoustic feel, just simple, just yeah. just simple flute and con and congas, and that's it. I mean, we you know, know. we wanted to capture, you know, not only the island traditional Puerto Rican Latino vibes, mm -hmm. but we wanted the uh, the Native American mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. tones to overcome everything else that I was doing, and that's what mm -hmm. we established on this one. Another thing too is, as far as the lat why you know I picked a Latin theme mm -hmm. was basically is my mother is from Mexico. She was, you know, born in Mexico, okay. came over in the 20s, became an American citizen. Um, and so I, I've never done anything on my mom's side of the family. Oh. And uh, so she was, yeah, she was from Sonora, Chihuahua, Mexico. And my dad was born in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, being a full native, um, I, you know, I, I've been playing all these albums, making all these albums of ma mainly, you know, native themes. Mm. I decided, you know what, I'm going to put my mom and my dad in this album. Mm. This is basically how it all started out. And uh, when I came to Nelson with the idea, I said, hey, you know, let's do a Latin album. I, mean, I, I got my mom, dad, why, why not? You know, you get a, you get fry bread, you got, you got a, you got a doctor. <laughs> put them together. You know? There you we go. Yeah, throw some ration beans in it. Why not? Oh, good. I but, and I, actually, I'm hungry. I can go for an Indian taco right now. <laughs> hungry, yeah. <laughs>